looking good. Shall we just jump right into it? Yeah, let's okay. do it. Ladies and gentlemen, the Sex Actually podcast. My name's Dave Neal. Welcome to the show I'm with Tasha Courtney, as Hello. always, and Meredith Jacqueline. Hi. Our number one guest <laughs> ever. <laughs> Look, we were going to have you on regardless because I know the only time Meredith has been on the podcast is back when I used to like try to fit everything in. So we'd like podcast out of my car. You yeah. Know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> or like, or like out of my, my uh, side job, the little golf cart. We literally did yes, a podcast. We in did a golf one cart. on the side of the road in the like golf cart. Here's what's time. sad is <laughs> the, num- so funny. the number yeah. one downloaded <laughs> podcast of the SAP of all time was recorded in a golf cart. Yep. Yep. <laughs> in a residential neighborhood so in all, Santa Monica. <laughs> all that effort that I've ever... But I'm going to get a beer right now. All that effort that I've put into trying to make the show the best that it can be. All the hundreds equipment, of dollars of new equipment I've got. And the <laughs> troubleshooting <laughs> and the cords. We bought all these like $90 cords because we were having a sound issue that we like couldn't figure out. So it was just like trial and error. Like, Wait, Tasha, you know what I think it is? I'm not going to lie. We got these really nice headphones. I don't think we could hear the issue before we got the Probably. nice headphones. And now that we have nice headphones, it's you can just hear obvious. Yeah, but I get rid of it in post, so people don't even know what we're talking about. There's like a little... Right, so- right. I found, I found It'll a- come and go. You might hear it, but... I had to get rid of it. You, can you, you, uh, just to double check, can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, yeah we can all I'm hear you fine. I'm struggling with my own... Trying yeah. to be very conscious that the female voice is uh, louder than the male on this. Good. Episode. You know, Mary? Like, well, you know, that's how it should be pretty much all. <laughs> well, in today's world, though, if I'm a decibel <laughs> off, people write in. They go, your voice, Taj is like, your voice is louder than everyone else. There was a funny Steve Carell. <laughs> one of the funniest sketches I've ever seen is Steve Carell on Funny or Die. And he, and of course, he was being facetious. But in the sketch, he's like super deadpan. And he wanted his head to be slightly larger than everybody else's head <laughs> in the movie poster. <laughs> and it's literally just the funniest idea. But anyway. I want you guys to be a tick decibel higher than me. Good. Perfect. Um, <laughs> yeah, so the most downloaded episode, I'm sure it had to do with the title. We talked about Devil's Three, yeah. we talked about yeah. uh, some Emeritus mm-hmm. past. And what's going on with you? You've been, um, you've been um, single and loving it? or where Yeah, you I've been single for like a year now. Um, just kind of doing my own thing. I've been traveling a shit ton. And um, there was like a good solid few months there where I just like didn't give a shit about dating because i was just busy um but it's made me really productive and um i've been doing getting on stage more and um being on uh, you know more shows um my social media is doing really really well and yeah it's well. like you have all this time all of a sudden when yeah you're, like involved in yeah. a relationship or yeah. like meeting new people you're just like oh i can focus on me and it shows yeah like you yeah. get more productive i think you've doubled your instagram following yeah. since we last talked to you yeah i think so that's it's exciting probably, yeah yeah i'm at How 131,000 even... right now shut the yeah. front door tell congrats yeah the secret. <laughs> We'll turn the pod. We won't let anyone else yeah. tell us the secret. What is it? I mean, there are kind of a lot of factors, but one thing that really helped me, and just because of the nature of my account going private. I, it, oh, you're private. Yeah. Okay. I went, I went private. Nice. Um, number one, because uh, now I don't get reported as often because some of the stuff that I post is like really raunchy anal jokes and stuff like that. And it'll pop up on people's explore feed and some prudes will report me. So yeah, why, oh, that's annoying. Why are we yeah. so afraid of the butthole I don't in know. our country? I don't know. And the nipple. Buttholes and no nipples. Idea. We need to yeah, free the nipple There's and free the butthole. Up. Free them all. <laughs> free the holes. Like, I don't know. <laughs> Loosen right. those buttholes. <laughs> yeah. I've been saying I've wanted to do a naked episode, but I'm not going to throw that on you right now. But I think it'd be funny to do a naked, except for like I me. Still, I have still have pasties on from a shoot, so we'd actually be fine. Here's what uh, women don't understand. If you look at me, like me now, my legs are crossed. But if like, if you saw me naked with my legs crossed, it would be really I don't know what's pointing in what direction right now. There's a, it looks like a, just a water balloon if you squeeze it and there's just things going in different directions. That's what, hey folks, how are you? Good to see you. That's just what it looks like. But it's like some guys like they're like dude you can't cross your legs man what do you like where you put your nuts they just go up or they down move. of my legs I they, yeah, they don't, and i have normal <laughs> size that's nuts ju- that's just small a nuts. thing that's like the man spreading thing it's like it's this idea that like we men can't possibly close their legs yeah. because their nuts would squish but like it's like your nuts are not the size of grapefruit i promise <laughs> and they're not hard yeah <laughs> like, and can they're not rock solid iron <laughs> cast walls yeah. you, they're gonna smush up and are down are you guys nuts planning to me right now <laughs> Is that what this is? No, to the the other men out there. To all <laughs> the guys riding the subway but what with you don't six know is feet of room this, between their knees. This, that feeling, I'll do it to your mic. 
that feeling can hurt. Yeah, like, it ah. hurts a tit too. No, 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 no. Look, yes. I'll never get the whole, you know, baby through a vagina birth thing, wh- however it works, whatever that magic is you guys do. But getting hit in the nut, man. So it, why are you leaving this target wide open with I don't your get legs it. Well, spread open on the subway? It, it's be, oh, well, it's, it's, it comes and goes from the body to regulate heat. That's how dumb we are is we couldn't even <laughs> find a way to regulate the ball temperature. The sp- you know what I mean? Like we basically have a fridge of babies in our balls and we in like if it's hot out like you know you've seen me on a few days my nuts are stuck to the side of my leg it's a whole thing and then if but then on a cold day those nuts are gone they're I gone that in my brain at all. or like, if, or like <laughs> what's that bad grandpa do you know the movie yeah. from like from jackass and yeah. he does that old, dirty old grandpa yeah, you get to a point where your nuts are going in the toilet water Ew. You get to a point. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm there, but like I have that to look forward to. I mean, look, you'll mm. have it with the tits, right? I mean, there's just, <laughs> just we're fighting gravity, you know? I don't know. <laughs> I, I Can keep... you get a ball lift? Is that a thing? You could probably shorten the skin. They have, you know, make like a smaller you pouch. Can, you can get a breast lift. They do scrotox. Um, don't make <laughs> me Google it. They do scrotox. <laughs> They do. Isn't that for sweating? I don't know, but they do it. I don't know either. I um, back in my uh, Uber days, I should have kept a journal of this. I I definitely have driven ladies to get their um, butterfly lips clipped. What what do you call it? A, a labiaplasty. Labiaplasty. Yeah. yeah. And look, the only reason I know this is because people tell me. They just don't give a fuck. There's something about being in a car that really feels like a safe, yeah, enclosed like, you know space. What? Fuck it, I'll tell you. I'll never see this surface. guy again. <laughs> right. I'm just gonna tell my Uber driver I'm going to get a labiaplasty. I mean, I can't tell you the stories <laughs> I have, but it's not about me; it's about you. Right. Now, are you still Ubering around? Did you Uber here? I did. Look I at did. you. Well, you just don't. Today was like I. Got all of my stuff over on this side of town, like in one day. Do all the errands. Yeah, so the- I took the train to downtown and did some shit downtown, and then went up to Glendale and here. So, yep, Uber nice. life. That's and then nice. in Glendale, you were getting, uh, you were plumping up your. Yeah, uh, I was getting the second half of my syringe juvederm in my lips. Now, yeah. what is that nerve wracking? The first time you do that? Yes, I was terrified the first time because I like uh, half of my girlfriends have juvederm in their lips. But, but I, you but only notice you know. the people who have it done badly. Right. And exactly. that's the thing. <laughs> like you yeah. see all these like weird worm lips. Yeah. Around that, LA. Like are puffy and weird. Yeah. And, so and was, misshapen. Yeah. I was for sure very nervous. But the um, the nurse, you know, who does mine, I've seen a lot of her clients. I've seen a lot of her before and afters and they all look so natural and so good. And I trusted her because, you know, when I went in um, and I bought a full syringe and she was like, we're only going to do a half at a time maximum. And I want you to wait a couple weeks. See how it back. settles. Yeah, because she was like, I don't want it to look crazy. I, I want it to look natural. And so... So why, how do people go from just a little bit of... You know, because I actually had some family members that I noticed got a little bit of work done. Mm-hmm. And they're like, it's they're in eat New England. You would have never... It's like what the culture is just... Work? You know, no, just like, you know, some injection, not like any like facelift or anything, but like to the point where I could, I'm not going to call them out. They don't listen. But like, I I was like, oh shit, like, that's cool. I mean, like, good for you for like, Mm -hmm. you're like a, you're like a married older lady and you just want to feel sexy. Yeah, just do something for yourself. I don't necessarily understand it, but I want to be supportive until the point where like, like, God forbid you turn it like Tara Reid was a beautiful looking woman. Yeah. She just kind of went overboard. And I'm not here to like shame people, but it's like. You're literally like, and I'm not saying, of course, you're, you're, you're beautiful, but like the people that go too far, it's like, how do they get there? Is it body dysmorphia? Well, they're do, they get yeah. too zoomed in, I and think. It's, and it's an addiction. I feel like it's very similar to when you start getting tattoos. You get one or two and Speaking then you of, really show like us those um, hands. Yeah. And I've got like my entire shoulder and I have appointments to do my full sleeve. No so shit. It's very a similar addiction. You like the way it looks at first and then you start thinking of other things you want done and it's you realize that it's so accessible and easy mm-hmm. also to change. And it your really parents. is like affordable. It's not like it mm-hmm. used to be like now it especially in LA because there's right. just thousands of providers and, that right. do things like injections and Botox and, and it's not taboo anymore. More. No. It used to be like. Are you Jewish? No. Okay. So you can't get buried if you're Jewish with a tattoo, no. right? That's no, the rule. Some crazy I think shit. so. That's the rule, right? It's insane. In, you can't be in a, yeah. Jewish. in a Jewish cemetery. Yeah. 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 The fuck? You know what I mean? But like, but like a tattoo is different than, say, you know, overdoing the nose job sure. too many times to your Michael Jackson. You know what I mean? Sure. I mean, yes, it's different, but the, I think the addiction is kind of still the same. And it's, 
And in a similar way, it's not like taboo anymore to get cosmetic procedures done. It used to be, you know, I remember growing up in like, it was like taboo to get Botox or like it was yeah. a thing, you know, it was. Well, you grew up in Texas, right? Yeah, but I grew up in Austin, so it's like okay. fake Texas. Yeah, that's tattoo. It's, Texas. it's liberal it's, Texas. It's California. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like my transition moving here was pretty seamless. It was the same place. Some except dry there's town. a beach now. Yeah. <laughs> that's interesting. I mean, yeah, because I mean, but like what? Because for like a tattoo, like if you got a face tattoo, I mean, you might be able to go back from that. But like, you know, it's, right. like, it's, it's a permanent, it's permanent. thing. Like that's um, a decision. Like even if you're okay with it, a decision to get a face tattoo is like right. I mean that's ex- that's, ex- that's pushing it more that's extreme. Awesome. But I, I just like kind of the comparison of once you get one thing done, then you kind of want a little more, maybe a little more. Um, what else would you get done? For me, I really, I mean, there's not really anything else. Eventually, maybe Botox, but I think I'm like killing it right now so yeah well you yeah. got that uh, <laughs> you know? olive skin what's your uh what, what's your where do you uh... well according to my 23 and me i because so my parents like told me i was part native american my entire life and they're too, right? fucking liars yeah like, although there like, is like total lies. apparently the genetic diversity on the mm-hmm. test is not very strong and because like native americans don't want to participate right so like there's be. some politics there but I I think that's a very common lie. Yeah, like if you been, come yeah. out brown, your parents just tell yeah. you like, oh, you're, sure, na- yeah. you're a Native American. Squanto over here. There must have been just some pride back in the day where like grandparents or something like, oh, yeah, you're a not like there must have been some pride there. And it just got yeah, because back in the day you would just carry down whatever. Like, well, recipe. before it was pride. I mean, Native Americans couldn't own property or vote. Yeah. Like at the same time, you know, it used to be that people said they were black Irish if they were brown, you know, like if they were dark skinned, like you couldn't be black, you couldn't be Native American. Saying you're black Irish now, people tense up because they don't know what black Irish means. Right. What does it mean? No one knows what it means. It's just a, you know, a dark skinned person. Yeah. It's a part of Ireland that they were formed by some raping and pillaging of Spaniards or whatever the hell, you know, and you know, the Spaniards have raped and pillaged them, whichever way it happened. (laughs) The point is it's like, yeah, Irish of color. It's It's like like a fucked up part of history. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Well, we, my 23 me, and it kind of confirms some things that doing like genealogy research, I'm majority like 94% European white, like French, German, English, pretty basic European white, but then like four or five percent African. Interesting. Wow. So, do you know what part? Mostly Nigerian. Wow. Well, You're trying to scam do, us right now? No, but I do know for a fact, and this is like, awful but my grandmother's side on my dad's side they historically they lived in like the carolinas and were plantation owners so i know that they owned slaves at some point so probably somebody raped a slave is oh probably God. what happened here yeah well this like, episode that's took a probably turn probably what happened yeah. well i mean just like historically speaking like it, Look, it, I, mean, it prob- I like to think it was some like it was love affair, but if we're being real, probably not. Yeah. Well, well, you, when you're owned by somebody, you don't exactly have like a lot of say in your relationship. Right, exactly. I mean, look, this is what this what science is forcing our country to deal with. The, the mm-hmm. idea that like there's Reconcile. a lot. There's a lot. Yeah. Of, I mean, did you know that? I and mean, again, I want to get too far into it because we it's three white people talking about it. But this <laughs> right. is the first year where they're li- seriously like considering reparations in the election. Where they're, they're, they have a like congressional like uh, they're looking into it to see like mm. what would happen, what would the stimulus thing be? It's it's, it's, like, inter- it's good. How I mean, would that work? Yeah. yeah, I mean it's just like you know they say the average uh, you know white person has like for every hundred bucks a white person has a black person's got five. It's just you know what I mean, just like the just, fucking, yeah the yeah, wealth disparity in general in mm-hmm. this country. And speaking of white things, I saw today that Trader Joe's has a podcast now. This is who I'm competing against. Trader Joe's. Trader wow. Joe's has a podcast. They have a podcast, and I was like, man, <laughs> fuck these people. I bet you it's a good podcast. <laughs> They have a new item they try. How much would you love that if they're just eating some coconut chips and you're like, I, I want to get that. Now. I, I want to just start a podcast where I try some new snack every week and like review it in depth. Like, By the way, it. snacks are getting really amazing. We just were talking about this today because I've gotten hooked on these new things. They carry them at Starbucks. You can also get them at uh, like Smart and Final is mm-hmm. where I've gotten a few packs. They're called hip peas and they're chickpea, mm-hmm. like Cheetos, basically. Oh, they're like shit. the puffy. That awesome. Yeah. Do you guys because want I'm some? gluten free <laughs> and vegan. And so, like, I can't eat a lot of junk foods. Yeah. Do you want to Well, t- I'm not vegan, but I can't eat eggs. I can't eat dairy. So, 
Yeah, yeah. they're good. Go get them. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm, I'm like now addicted. Like all it means is that instead of like junk food being cheap, like now I have to spend $9 right, yeah, on yeah. a bag of like gluten-free oh, yeah. vegan junk food. But that shit's so good. There's, there's another pack in there too. And then I, well, stuff like this, I eat it and I'm like, oh, well, it's healthy. It's fine. And then I eat like two bags in one sitting. Like, no big deal. It's fine. It's healthy. <laughs> Tasha dropped one of them. I gave it to the dog and he just goes. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm going to try one of them. Do you like how I pivoted from reparations to uh, Trader Joe's real quick? I do you like that? that? Was... That's talent. They don't, I don't get enough. Go. Uh, you know, love. They don't, they don't the, teach that in school. <laughs> no, they don't. That's not in the old podcasting academy. Which, if it's not, podcasting probably is going to be a college course pretty soon. Yeah, you're probably right about that. Those are legit. Things. Right? Those they're so good. And they're snack. made with chickpeas instead of like regular flour. But it's literally, it's a cheese puff. Yeah. That's what it is. It's a cheese puff, but well, we, we gotta, can pretend it's healthy. We got to get smart with what we're putting in our bodies because Tasha, there's a lot of food she can't have with the, with the old Lyme disease. So, you know, it's got to be non-dairy, non-egg, yeah. this and that. Because I thought I was actually, I went to Trader Joe's today to get plain food because we're flying out tomorrow. If you're listening to this, we're already back. We made it unless Boeing 737 MAX 8 crashed us. In I really case. hope that's not what kind they of ground, they we're grounded not, them all. Yeah, we're not okay. flying yeah. them. Yeah, we're not the FAA them. grounded them. Which I, is crazy because... I was supposed to be on one next month going to the Dominican um, on American, but American grounded the entire... Someone's going to have Good. to fly on those. They've just did the software patch. Like Someone's going to have to be the first batch of people and they're right? all going to collectively take Hopefully off. Hopefully there are a bunch of people that like don't pay they attention don't to that. You know, no, like you don't um, know what kind of plane it's going to be yeah. whispered around for sure people will be like yeah. oh, yeah. it's gonna be a tense flight most of the airlines at least i know that southwest was doing this and american they were basically letting you know like before they grounded them like you can change your flight with no like penalties or whatever that's good if you're, I, that's you know. the least they can do right like, <laughs> oh thank you for allowing me to not, not get on, fly a on death this death machine <laughs> yeah you know before you got here what I, I was literally reading like an article that had like excerpts from the black box from oh, the God. one that crashed in ethiopia and it, it was basically just like the the pilots knew they were trying to they knew that it was fucking up they knew that it kept trying to like nose dive down, and they were yeah. trying to like figure out how to correct it and like they were like get the manual you know like trying yeah. to read the manual to figure out what the problem was and then the reason that one didn't crash i didn't hear about this but one almost crashed but didn't crash because there was a third pilot on board who was just a passenger yeah, he was but a who knew to disable the power source yeah. that was like had to turn off autopilot and manually manually like yeah correct. there was some sort of it was like a bug in the system that was saying that something was low and so to correct it was auto pitching down mm -hmm. but that problem wasn't happening it was just a fake like right, signal right. that this problem was happening and so every time they would try and fix it it would just keep going back down so once they were able to like reduce that or eliminate that signal right then they were fine well look you got to give trump credit where it's due he let, he like tweeted uh, you know one of his barrage of tweets about how like tech he was like an old grandpa tweet where it was like technology yeah, back in my day. That, yeah, <laughs> yeah they used to be able to fly these things now technology is making everything you know and it's yeah. i mean it's a it, and it's a, it's a true well, thing like they literally couldn't figure out how to just fly yeah. the f plane it was like they tried to make the plane too intelligent yeah but where we got terrorists you know. that learn how to fly a you know what i mean right Anyway, so speaking of Mile High Club, you like how I pivoted right there? <laughs> have you have you uh, experienced the um so high in the mile? I am deeply claustrophobic, and like I can barely even enter an airplane bathroom by myself. So the thought of me plus a human in there that I would that would just send me into a panic attack. However, last month I met a guy on a plane, and we've gone out twice. And wow. like, yeah. wow! He's awesome. So he was sitting. Um, it was a flight back from the Dallas Fort Worth area where my family is to here. Um, and I had an aisle seat and he was in the window. So I was sitting down, he came to sit in and I was like, Oh, this guy's pretty cute. So we start chatting. And before the person to come sit in the middle came, um, I was like, he, we were getting along and everything. And I was like, Hey, if the person who's sitting here like sucks, I'll scoot over. So it was like this old man, like coming down the aisle. So I just scooted over and we start talking and he it was really awesome. He lives in Dallas. Um, and he comes out to LA for work sometimes and like super cool randomly turns out his birthday is exactly two days after mine hey like we did our like tr i'm psycho and i make everyone do their like birth chart birth chart ah, like, me too. Full I love it. <laughs> yeah. 
So I did it, and our charts are almost identical because we were born really close together, too. He was just really awesome, and we wound up getting drunk on the plane. And then when we got, like, landed in no L.A. touching? Not on the plane, but there was, like, some, like, flirting There's and stuff. chemistry. Yeah. You know, you can tell when you're, like, getting along with someone. So we get off the plane, and we, like, just stop at one of the airport bars, like, to get another drink. And then wow, I, and then that's, like, yeah. serious. If you're extending your amount of time in an airport. We were yeah, like, you literally okay, took okay. a flight to your first date. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then I, I took him home with me. So that was cool. And then the last time I was in Dallas um, visiting family, I took a night and I went and he took me out to dinner and to a comedy show and so you went, stuff so, like that. Okay. And this is good. This is, I'm, I'm just exploring. This is, this is nice. So you went from a flight, met the guy, landed, you had this whole rush, you went to the bar and then you took him home that from the bar. Yeah. So yeah. he didn't even check his bags. He just was straight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. that could be a love story like I that know, could be it i know and then we went out again um in dallas like a couple or a week and a half ago and nice. he's great he's super fun and cool and so yeah <laughs> are you seeing any other guys oh a handful handful i went on a date last night was, what are you doing to, aside from flights uh what are you doing to meet guys like bumble and hinge yeah still doing yeah. those yeah i tried to like do the whole meet people in the wild thing and then like i realized that like nobody does that anymore so like people aren't even yeah. open and receptive yeah. to like being approached and it was also just like whenever i was out places everyone that i would meet had a girlfriend or something and i was like well this is just awkward and also i realized like i hang out with a bunch of other dude comics and i was <laughs> like mm, probably not where i'm gonna do my my hunting yeah i had an so. idea what if they had this what if they had a section of the plane for single people yes. but it's curated right so right. you've got a matchmaker who's saying meredith look this guy's your type your style and you're not out of each other's league you know what i mean because you don't yeah. want to be matched with some single crazy person right, right but also like you know like they just see a photo of you in a brief thing that's a great what if idea, we just segregate all planes by category families in one yeah. section so yes. all of their screaming wild kids can be next to How each about other an entire separate airline for people with children <laughs> just a whole other all the people airline. traveling with dogs, dogs can be in one yeah. section we can have the dog section we can have the kids section we can have the single section Mm-hmm. In a masturbation friendly section, because I've always said there should be, there's no place. Like I mean, w- women can masturbate anywhere they want, pretty much. No, women can. You, no, I mean, you, you physically, like, you probably physically could. more discreetly. I guess. You just put a leg up do I? I don't know women who like have the overcoming urge. Yeah, I've never been to like, masturbate in public. Like, can't stop themselves. Need to masturbate in public. Well, yeah. I'm about- usually like, I can wait till I get somewhere more private. <laughs> this is, but this is the you difference know? when we talk about gender. How like the the biologically, or you know, maybe it's the level of testosterone men produce. But whatever it is, like if we see something, or we're triggered by a smell, or the way the wind I blows, I think on more our than balls, anything, it's the amount of. Ex- excuses you guys have no but that's why would we jerk why you think guys want to jerk off there's guys yes, listening right now they're like absolutely do why, but <laughs> why would we if we didn't have this primal urge why would we like dedicate part of our day to just having to go tug one out you know what i mean <laughs> like why would robert Kraft have to go to a you know a, a salon this billionaire to go rub to get one off you know because people are fucked in the head and like it's only exciting when a stranger does it or if they're like like discreetly rubbing one out under yeah. a blanket it's on a like plane a, next to a stranger. Like a I'm telling you right yeah, now. It's no, if I had one of those pod seats like on a, a plane where no one would ever find if out. If it was just biological, you could wait until you were in a private I'm, place. I'm telling you, if I'm taking a six hour flight and I got like time to get in to a boner and get out of a boner, like you got a lot of time and you zip it, you know what I mean? Like if no one can tell, you got the little egg, little pod that's thing. That's not you how good, it is. You curate a nice porn on the little Delta screen. You find exactly Ugh. what you want. Want, then you, for like two hours you're looking no women would ever fly on those planes the <laughs> masturbation planes because no, can you can like, you imagine a black light how, in there like, unsanitary that would be casting <laughs> that's like the friendly sky that's like like the old those old um adult video stores that had like the viewing rooms <laughs> so, even just like hotels yeah like i heard there was like something it was like a funny review that popped up i don't know some stupid listicle but this listicle was a review of a black light flashlight that was like mm. never take this to your hotel no. you won't believe it i feel like i don't want one of those in really any situation i don't ever want to use those in a man's apartment i don't want to use that on public transportation i, I saw just, um, no 
I saw an advertisement for the flashlight. So the flashlight looks like a giant flashlight, right? Mm-hmm. Like I've never, but I've, like with a vagina. I, I've got end. like a pocket pussy because you know, like we'll talk about Adam and Eve, but they right. sent us a bunch of stuff. I know you've worked. Yeah, with they them. send me. So stuff they send too. me a pocket pussy. It's like I'm not gonna not fuck. You know, if you know whatever. Just to see, want to try, try it out. <laughs> I did it once, and the fucking paints where the labia paints wearing off, and it breaks uh. through the end because it doesn't have a casing. <laughs> so it's just like fucking a jellyfish in your hand. But uh, but anyway, um, I like those. This remember is those, the like, raunchiest episode we've done in a while. <laughs> it's Remember, I'm grossed out. <laughs> Remember those like um, those toys from like elementary That's school exactly that were like the was. worm oh, thing. Oh <laughs> yes, That's That's it, it like, had like little glitter inside. Yeah, that's what I'm. That's the technology. <laughs> but so now, uh, Fleshlight has. Uh, I saw this as an advertisement. I don't know if they're actually making it, but it's a rocket ship. Now imagine, imagine if like you're a dude, blast like, off. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, blast in uh, it, uh, uh, space station. Uh, <laughs> you're like inviting a woman over to your apartment. She's like, it's kind of, he's he's cute, but like he has like a weird like space. Rocket ship collection. Some on rocket his ships wall. are bigger than others. But it, but He's so like really can, into NASA. He's really into space. It can stand. It can stand up and look like you know what I mean. So I think that's the idea. Is they're discreet looking. But apparently you don't just fuck it. It fucks you. It's got like inchworm technology. It kind of like milks you. Oh, I don't know. I just saw a thing for it. That's all. I don't have it or anything yet. Hey, uh, <laughs> donations can be made. No, I mean, honestly, no. I'm like, look, and the truth is, it's like, you, you look, you're like, oh, here's a sex robot that looks like Kate Beckinsale. It's like, it's not Kate Beckinsale. You know no. what I mean? No, you're not. No one's going to be fooled by some robot. Like, I can't even have, like, I, back in my single days, I went to this Bud Light event, like, this was years ago. They, they, like, had, they threw some concert. Some chick started talking to me, and I go, you work for them, right? <laughs> she goes, no, I don't. I go, yeah, you do. And like, she, I was like convinced she worked for them because she was talking to me. And then eventually she got weirded out and walked away. <laughs> but I was She's right. Like, this guy has really low self-esteem. Like, killing it. Killing <laughs> yeah. it. No, but I was dead right because they only gave tickets away to bros. And there's a bunch of chicks when we showed up. And when's, when are the chicks the first ones right. at the concert? Literally never. I was like, no, you were higher. But then she eventually was like, right, get this fucking creep out of here. But as you know, anyway, it was. Uh, but that's like, it's like it's the allure. It's like if you're if you like if you no one, you know what I mean? Like it's it's uh, it's one thing to have like a sex worker and like go to Amsterdam or or do all that but it's another thing to like feel like you're bonding with someone it's it goes to show that i think the human connection is more important than oh, fucking sure. some fleshlight that has the same you know anal cavity of whatever right. porn star you have or whatever it's like it's fun to try it just to see but then like all right that's enough like i have quite a collection of sex toys <laughs> thank you adam and eve um, <laughs> but like and they're cool like that's great i'll use them but i'm like well i'd really just rather like actually fuck somebody this time <laughs> like it's it's the the human connection that's just like well i know when uh when i didn't do my job when tasha points to the sex toy box afterwards <laughs> i know i didn't do my job when she's like let's finish it off with some uh, technology <laughs> that, that'd be like if i had that'd be like if she came to see me at, like in a play and then she's like let's watch netflix now. <laughs> I'll say if someone else doing better. <laughs> but she's got a couple, and then I got a cock ring that's like, look, I mean, look, I've always wanted one of those, like, vibrating. You you put your balls in the one part, and it kind of right. just, like, chokes you like you're wearing a tight, you know, turtleneck some aunt gave you for Christmas. And it's, uh, and you turn it on, and it's it's cool. I mean, it's... Oh, yeah, I have toys that are, like, really good partner toys that are, like, that's fun sometimes. What's a good partner toy? What should uh, we look at? My favorite one is Trist. It's Doc Johnson makes it, and they have it on Adam and Eve's website. And it's like, you can use it solo. It has like a diagram of all the different uses because it like is shaped kind of like a wishbone. Okay. And so like the two prongs um, vibrate independently of like the base. So you can use it like around your dick or you can use it on her. She, I mean, there's like all wow. kinds of uses for it. Yeah. You need to email so, your people. <laughs> it's going to get one. to some point where we just, I stick my dick in a box and, yours, <laughs> and it's like a puzzle piece. And we just... <laughs> Turn it on like a weed wag. Let's just see. <laughs> we just stand there because like, <laughs> that's how we are. We're both very like. Uh, what's what's the term? Where like, we both love. We're both we both love uh, sensation. Like we like when we get couples massages. Like that's the way we bond. We go right. to a place and other people touch us. Like that's <laughs> how we bond. I don't know. So okay. So we'll have to uh, we'll have to look into these uh, toys because yeah. I mean look. I mean yeah. Like the one thing we've got is like a you know it's one of those sort of like tickling you know bass guitar dildos that tickles your you know different i don't even know which i thought this was supposed to tickle your asshole but apparently it was to it's like tickle the your clit. yeah yeah, Got yeah. 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 <laughs> doesn't have his anatomy down he oh. thought it was for tickling his bum i did an, uh, i did an adam and eve unboxing because i was like what the fuck and as i'm doing the <laughs> unboxing tashi normally could give a shit about what i'm unboxing and her eyes lit up she's like what are these <laughs> <laughs> have you ever used them when I'm when I'm not around? I know when I've been out of town, but like I feel like you don't. 
enough. I mean, I'm glad you don't just like plow yourself and don't need me. But like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel like you. I mean, you wouldn't keep that from me, right? Like, because I I think it'd be pretty cool if you were like, yeah, I'm just you know. Well, I don't ask, don't tell. I don't know. Do, uh, like, sure, I use them when you're not around. But like, <laughs> no. How do often? you come home and ask me? But not often. You wouldn't. Would you be embarrassed if I like walked in accidentally? You'd be so embarrassed. It, it'd be up. like your face when I walked in on you jerking off in the shower. <laughs> it was like <laughs> eyes wide and horrified. No, no, no. You like, should like, like if, Dave's, if Dave's traveling, you should like make a video and send it to him. No, uh, yeah, Spice absolutely. Just, <laughs> just, just live in the cloud forever. Yeah, put it on the Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> New just, Patreon tier. Just your private little, like, yeah, just, you know, be like thinking about you. Have you had, have you like been with guys that, that taught you like a new tool or thing. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like that's, Hmm. you know, you kind of learn. I feel like women are generally the teachers. Yeah. The only thing I will say is when I was like 19 or 20, I was sleeping with a guy who was a lot more experienced than I was. And he gave me my first like G spot orgasm. And when he did, it was like, Oh shit. That's that. I can do that too. And when he did it was like i learned from him how to like get myself there with other people so now yeah. i like know how to achieve that more often than i think most women yeah I, I, I mean i have friends who've never had a g-spot orgasm and so like i think that's something that once you learn how to have one then like you n- know how you know the- yeah it just takes a little like training and yeah. practice yeah so we take that's a phone call we've say- got a lot of guys calling in right now they want to know how like, how, how like, <laughs> Did you, did, was there it, did, are literally like you VC, can, yes. like what are the VHS tapes there's, that like there is a you lot can of get information that, out there. But there is different. So like a guy can't hear it. Like, like if a guy's driving his car and it's, it's some brakes are squeaking, you're like, mm-hmm. oh, I think I know what the issue is. But like if you're not communicating properly, right. it's like I would like every guy wants their girl to just be some like squirting kind of like, ah, right. I'm like overcome with every guy wants that. If, if you just like if you knew what buttons to press, like playing a video right. game, but they don't teach you what L2 does. Right. Yeah, but isn't that the whole point? Like Look it up on YouTube. If mm-hmm. you don't know how to fix your brake, you either take it to a professional or you figure <laughs> right. it out. So I got to take you to a professional. <laughs> <laughs> but there's there's so much information out there. And then also, I think this is something that um, both w- men and women are guilty of, not asking enough questions or not being vocal enough. Like, I always tell women, don't fake orgasms. Don't do that. that yeah, you're doing yourself anyone. a disservice. You're That's, just setting yourself up to be yeah, disappointed be for disappointed, the rest of your life. And this man's not going to learn how to please you. So yeah. like be, you know, be more vocal and tell somebody what you like. And yes, you Liz, know, more of that. Don't I got do a that. buddy in the Northwest. I'm using a different part of the country just to throw off people's scent. <laughs> <laughs> and by saying that, it ruins it. But I got a buddy in the Northwest. He loves to eat vagina. He What's ate. his number? <laughs> uh, I'll take that. That's the thing. That's the thing. Like he literally in it back in the day, like I'm not, you know, he's a cool cat and a guy for a long time. Just and I didn't understand it and I was like, whatever, but he just loved it. He just that's just a pastime of his. He's a pleaser. But I don't know. I don't even know if it's about pleasing. There's something to be. Some guys like to clean their plate. Like that, that's just that was just. We had a guy in, in in college. My roommate DJ Obbs. He went down on a girl for four hours. And he, well, that's like well, you're doing I'm, it wrong. Well, he said it. Yeah, he, I'm tired. tired. <laughs> yeah, you lose feeling after yeah, four yeah. hours. I, like my clits. Not <laughs> that point. Well, like, that's the thing. Like he. Well, he told us the next morning. Like you know, like you know, you talk to your 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 roommates the next morning. And you're like, oh yeah, we fucked for like twenty minutes. It was cool. We're like, oh, we blah blah blah. And he was like, we, like I went down there for four hours we're all like jesus christ like, <laughs> like your neck have you be- ever like had a makeout session with a guy and like gotten like a raw chin because yes, his beard hair was, like <laughs> my one of my girlfriends um she's australian she calls it pash rash like passion hey rash. So pash, pash rash. rash when you're making out and you're, like it a guy's beard, you like wake like, up yeah. the next morning like all raw mm-hmm. you need some neosporin well, on i want to finish yeah. my question here so back to that so that was dj ob's praying mantis he's happily <laughs> married now but he actually so he went down on her and and it was one of those um he had one of those rooms that was like two twin beds they converted into like a king mm-hmm. so like he went down on her until he like tacoed the beds and they were like <laughs> inside the beds but anyway enough on him my buddy uh my buddy who likes uh, uh, uh vaginas but his girlfriend um he went down on her once and she kind of like 
got freaked out really and, and so he was like uh he was like i uh, i just never so i never tried it again and here i am but picking that's up like, the wrong thing to do i know he should well what should he do there's like a convince- myriad of reasons why she wouldn't have so, been cool with it that one time yeah. but could still be cool with it tomorrow like maybe she just felt gross because she hadn't showered after shower yoga or something. or something yeah but if it was that you would think there would be a time since then in a tryst or so, maybe he wasn't doing it right so i've also had girls um message me on Instagram and stuff and ask me how they can be more comfortable receiving because I think a lot of women are really self-conscious about their vaginas yes. and what they look like and what they look like yes. or how they smell guys or whatever. always see guys dicks when they're growing up right. like in the locker room and never see each other's vaginas no so ever. you don't know if your vagina is normal looking right. or not all you see are porn vaginas which are like weird you know it's like yeah, porn it's, people yeah. who are a stereotype but even, even more than that guys expect you know, we, we have like an optimistic look on our genitals. We're like just naturally like, who wouldn't want to suck? Why would you want to, why would right. you want to suck my dick? And it's just that when women can, can tend to be more like sort of on that, like, Ugh. yeah, and it should not be that well, way. Well, because literally from birth, we're like, push our tits up. Yeah. Suck I mean, we're told in. like Put our so much out. to change about like, our bodies. Hey guys, I'm all feminist. If this gets uh, more guys looking pussy, I'm Absolutely. all for you here. So what? Eating so, pussy 2019. Okay. Let's assume. <laughs> <laughs> look at, that's the name of the podcast. It's like episode. our campaign <laughs> slogan. Yeah, yeah. And you wonder why she gets the Eat most pussy. downloads here. She's our uh, sex expert over here. So, so, so let's assume it wasn't because she just did yoga and she was a swamp mm-hmm. down and there. She was just like because I mean I think over over time I think a boyfriend would love it if a girl would slightly be like push his head down. I've had Tasha oh, yeah. do that. I've had you. I've had you uh, guide me uh, like uh, you were directing traffic. Yeah. <laughs> she puts white gloves on and she's like, "We're going this way." She had a whistle. No, I'm like, how'd you get a fucking whistle? Where'd you get this whistle from? No, yeah, I, and I've had I've had men that I've dated that have like wanted to get gross and nasty right after the gym. Like yeah, they like are put a into snorkel it, on like, and go down. Whatever. Um, I think a, a, women can be really self conscious about the way their vaginas look or if they smell or anything. And like, honestly, for the most part, men over the age of like 25, I would say there are some like early 20s dudes that are be like, no, I won't eat a hairy pussy or whatever. But like adult men are just really happy to be there. Yeah. Like <laughs> it doesn't matter. They I can't believe their luck. They, yeah. can't, they got a girl yeah. to go home with them. They exactly. can't believe them. They're just happy to be there. If you've ever had to paint very small uh, uh, little uh, doll, like if you ever had to paint like, like, like a little, like a troll or something, you know what like I mean? A- you- yeah, you know, like, like yeah, like an action figure. figure. You're like, you're like really tight in there. You got the light on it, and you got the little glasses and a magnifying glass. You know, just a, trying to. That's how a guy, like a a good precision going down on your lady should be like I'm a guy like, with a small careful. Ben Franklin glasses trying to really paint the corners here did I not describe that she's no, like no that didn't I, make it sexy no at all <laughs> <laughs> everyone's mm. just imagine honey I shrunk the kids the guy's the big <laughs> you know, the, holding like I don't think this makes sense there. does this translate to audio um <laughs> yeah I mean no because I, I mean because honestly like yeah I never understood the allure of it but it's there is a like a like a power thing. I mean, this in a good way. Like, I'm sure, like, I'm sure some women love to suck dick because it's like they can, like, oh, I 100% fi- feel like giving blowjobs. It's like a power thing. I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm bringing you to your knees. Kind of I'm thing. gonna let you talk to Tasha now. I'm gonna leave <laughs> episode, really. that's it for me, everybody. We're gonna let them take care of this one. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, look, the only way we, the only way I get a blowjob is if we do 69 and it's like sort of 69 in her way. 69 is trash. <laughs> Why? I think 69, 69 is trash because nobody's able to give their full effort. Like, yeah. I am not able to give my A plus blowjob if somebody's eating me out Wait, at the same time. Wait, what's your star sign? Sagittarius. Oh, boy. The sluts of the zodiac. Okay. <laughs> well, see, we're both Tauruses. And like we said about going to get mm-hmm. a massage, like, neither one of us are really givers. Right. Like, neither right. one of us is given A plus I effort. I, I think I so, make a okay. conscious effort of giving Tasha good massages. I know you, I know you think I dropped the ball up because she asked. He a promises lot. massages all the time. I and tonight. I receive them maybe 20% of the time. Yeah. Yeah. You heard that. He said he'll give me one tonight, right? Yeah, I might get one next I'll, month. I'll check in. Yeah. I, right, you want, <laughs> do you want to put money on it right now? Want to put five bucks on it? No. That's what I thought. Because that's not the 
point. The point is just be giving. No, I get the CBD lotion. We got nice little peppermint CBD lotion in there. <laughs> I get that out. I crank a little bit. I start going. I get around the corner. You know, I got to get you on the corner of the bed so I can use my weight in the right way. Yeah. <laughs> it, massaging can be... I actually bruised my... F- finger. I think you can still see it there. I was going, I'm telling you, man, I was like a lineman with these busted knuckles. I was going in on her back really hard. And Tasha's got, you got a little curvature of the spine. I'm really working it. I was doing a good job. I was trying. I literally, oh, I literally like, you. had like a crack in my 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 thumb the, or a pointer finger the next day. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> just like when I'm going down. Like, poor thing. I went from like, eating pussy to just being a loving boyfriend. <laughs> But yeah, I for me, sixty nine. Like when I, I can't, you know, bring my A game when somebody's eating me out because I'm like, well, yeah, I'm focused, yeah. And then I don't feel like a man if he's getting his dick sucked can really eat pussy. Yeah, the it's right almost way. like it, well, it's a prolonged experience too right. because neither one of you are like paying full attention, right? Or yeah. like experiencing at your fullest. And you said yeah. you're a Sagittarius, and you said that's the slut of the zodiac. It really is. We are the hoses. What zodiac. month is that? December. Well, it's late November to late December. Is there any re- scientific reason behind that, or you just? It's just the kind of we're astrology. All just, yeah, Sagittarius people are like just really like super free spirit and uh, so I got to talk to old and I got to talk to Tasha's mom for uh, delivering Tasha at the wrong month. <laughs> Why couldn't you wait until December? <laughs> and blowies for life here. <laughs> hey, look, Mary, I'll be honest. I think you're in the minority as far as women that love giving blowjobs. I'm saying you don't, you exist. There's people out there, but I don't think so, that's... I would say, yeah, probably. But I think there are a lot of women that enjoy doing it when it's like they're, they're in love with somebody. You know, yeah. like they like pleasing. It's yeah. not necessarily like just the action of sucking dick it's like the pleasing their partner thing mm-hmm. now would you be somebody it? that you feel really comfortable right. with what if you don't love yeah. the guy are you so, into it if you don't love the guy is there I, a different aspect to it i don't like give head to dudes that i'm just like like a hookup really yeah. i'm like not to completion that anyway. is more personal maybe to like sex. start it out but i don't like give a full blow job to a guy that i'm not like really into because i think oral is a lot more intimate than sex totally is. it's for sure yeah. So, um, I mean, it, I don't have to love a guy to like have a good time sucking his dick, but like, but you've been dating for a while. You're comfortable. Even, you're like, you know, I, there's a guy that I've gone out with like a handful of times that like we're comfortable with each other. I really like him. So like, I'm comfortable there, but like, if it's like a hookup, I'm not. Yeah. Do it. And that it's like reciprocal. There's yeah. some give and take, yes. you know, you're not just like, I'm give- very, very big on that. Like if a guy is not going to go down on me, I'm not putting his dick in my mouth. Like, Sorry. Like, yeah, this is a trade. <laughs> yeah, like, no, no, no. Let's set these terms for yeah. trade. Trade for trade. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, what I love about your Instagram is that you're f- you're really funny at calling out creeps in your DMs. Oh, God, there's so many. And even to the point where I feel like you've messaged their mothers. Is yes. That right? mm-hmm, yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about that for a minute. So, so, like, because, well, and just because it's, you know, you've, you've got your sexuality on your Instagram. Mm-hmm. It's not a carte blanche for guys to just. Right. Like, just know, because the, I talk about you know, being a sexual person doesn't mean like some stranger can send me a picture of his dick and it'd be okay. Yeah. There's three guys listening to the podcast right now with their dick in their hands and, like, <laughs> and a Polaroid just camera. Just thinking about <laughs> taking the photo. And they're going, whoopsie. And they're putting it away. <laughs> and they already had yeah. <laughs> I don't do this every time because it's a lot of work, but like if a guy is particularly gross in my DMs or like says something awful to me, there have been times, you know, where a guy will ask me out and it'll be like, i say, hey, I'd really like to take you out sometime. And I can say something as simple as, no thanks. Totally polite. And yeah, then, don't owe you anything. Yeah, and like, then he'll go off on me calling me a whore and a fat bitch. And I'm like, you would just ask me out. Like, man. I can't. There's plenty of guys yeah. that get the, rejected the that way don't they do that. turn on right. a dime. It's, it's insane. Like, yeah, it, that's, that's exactly what it it's is, just, though. It is insane. It's like, these, this person really has a problem. And like, how has nobody taught them that this is not cool yet? Yeah. Or why do they it's think their, because nobody will find out it's okay? You know, it's just like... it's They think it's anonymous. But so there have been times when men have have done that or have sent me a dick pic that I would look at their profile and it would be really easy for me to just find their family member or their mom. If it's been really easy, then it takes me like two seconds to find it. I have like screenshot their mom's profile and been like, would your mom like to know? <laughs> <laughs> and um, there have been times. So on Instagram, you can like delete your messages and but I screenshot them before like they can do it. And I have sent like screenshots to a guy's mom before 
And he, she was horrified. She was like, I didn't raise my son to speak to people like this. I was like, well, <laughs> he does. <laughs> yeah. So, and then he tried to tell his mom that his friend was it, on his uh, phone. And I was like, oh, I bet bitch. your friend was what on was his phone. Was he 13? Like, okay, you're 35. <laughs> yeah, what a bitch move. <laughs> like, what kind of an excuse is Just that? Just own up yeah. to it. Just, and yeah, I was like, well, maybe shit. you should surround yourself with better friends. <laughs> like, but I'm not against guys sliding into DMs because we've had plenty all. of podcast guests that have met their boyfriends or gotten laid through it or whatever. Like, yeah, plenty absolutely. Of time. There's so, so yeah. like, there's a difference between like being respectful and like not being, re- you know, like respecting her, her response. Right. Yeah. Like, if she says no, she doesn't owe you a reason. Exactly. And this like, is, she's a person. And she's allowed yeah, to say no. I'm, I am totally all for sliding the DMs. I've slid in guys' DMs before, and it's worked out. Like we've gone out and stuff. As long as you're respectful, and when you ask someone out, whether that's in the DMs, in person, anywhere, you have to know that there is a possibility that they are going to say no. You have to be prepared for rejection because yeah. that's how that. Works. Would you <laughs> shout at someone in their face in public right, and be never. like, "You're a fat bitch anyway"? Blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, never. Like, you, you would know? not do that no, if, at to most, my face. You'd be like. <sighs> And you'd walk away like, fuck her. <laughs> like, right, I, and yeah. that's your own dejection. You're not saying to her whatever. But it's first of all, it's funny how like of all the words in the human language, the verb to slide, it became the, the, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. of all like I ran, I jumped, I, 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 I vaulted my way into those DMs. And I slid, I slid my way into those DMs. Um, but like yeah, it it's smooth. Well, look, I, I got trolled yesterday by some guy and like, you know, like I need to do a no, just as just block right away policy. But I, I sometimes try to, if I'm bored and have time, mm-hmm. see where they're going with it. Some guy just was like, "Who listens to an hour forty five minute podcast?" You know, because I post it on Reddit, of course. Uh-huh. And of course, you always get trolled when you oh, post God, on yeah. Reddit. And I was like, "Oh, we got like ten thousand dollars a month, it's going pretty well." And blah blah blah. And he's like, "Oh well," and then he, and then and then he went into my YouTube channel to find ways to fuck with me. Oh, and he was like, "Oh yeah, but what a hack comic! You do a bachelor podcast." I go, "Well, it's a bachelor recap. The podcast is separate." You didn't troll me hard enough mm-hmm. to figure that out. You didn't do your Who job. Who the time? I know. And the, but then I was what the problem I've had. I don't know about anyone else. The problem I have when when like when I get trolled or have someone be a dick to me, I imagine someone one of my peers, like someone I would respect, treating me poorly. Mm-hmm. That's what hurts. When you think about it, it's a loser. These are oh, losers. Yeah, absolutely. These it's people never would never cool. They'd never be in the building with you. No. They would never be even and I do stand up, you know, because last... people who are normal have like a normal sense of like how to talk to people, how to yeah. be respectful, that other people have value, other opinions have value. I never once yeah. in seven years of stand up comedy had someone be like, Man, fuck you. Right, I've had people right. I've had like heckles, it's usually a drunk person, but you know, it's hardly ever like, You suck. It's never I mean, it's happened once where someone was like, you know, once in Portland some guy was right. some <laughs> bachelor party guy was so wasted he got kicked out halfway through my set and i was like well like i'll give him the benefit he was wasted and that's a different scenario but like but for some reason we're even entertaining like uh this just happened in um i think it happened in england there was a 21 year old female pro soccer player and she kicked i could be wrong it might not be england she kicked the ball so it's a photo of her kicking the ball and Mm -hmm. you know like she had soccer shorts on and it kind of like you know vagina the shorts you know what i mean like no camel toe but like you didn't see just, like right. p- like lips but it was like you know whatever and the trolls went crazy on this photo to the point like sexualizing it and all these weird things and like judging this and she was a good looking nice legs and everything but they did all that and then and then the the channel like the news company took the post down and then it went even more vogue it was like don't take the post down because yeah. these trolls like you need to do a better job of moderating the trolls yeah. moderate the trolls because those are the and, and when, when I say trolls I say who the, the people that can't handle being a normal human being they need to be the ones moderated not like shutting the thing down you know right. like it's like that's the like if you're going to accept like media dollars for having a social media company or a, a news channel, do your work to police it so we can have a civil, like we're humans. It's 2019. Right. We shouldn't be having like dudes being like, can I fuck you? You go, no. And then they go, well, you're, you know, too this or too that. And you go, how is this conversation even happening? Right. We're like, it's a devil. We're, we're devolving here. <laughs> this isn't how we should be. We shouldn't be entertaining it, but you have the right. You shouldn't be afraid to go into your Instagram DMs. Taja, you shouldn't be afraid to open up a photo that's blurred out because it goes, we don't know this content. You should go, oh, it must be a new friend. It shouldn't be like, ah, it's a dick. (laughs) Every time I get like on on Snapchat or something, if I get, it's just a photo message from somebody and not like a, a chat message, I'm always like, okay, here it goes. All right, I'm probably gonna see a dick now. And I think that my, I think though, I've gotten a whole lot less dick pics lately. Because Do you block? 
I do block people, but I will screenshot them and be like, I'm going to show your mom that you sent this to me. And like, I think that I've like shamed enough people and I'm kind of <laughs> like, put it out there that I'm going to do it. No, that they're the like, thing. oh, fuck. she's yeah. going to ruin my life. This is a problem is that Instagram. Well, somebody like, has, they have to learn somehow, yeah. sometime. Yeah. And mm-hmm. like, you either have to call them out. Or that's it. That's right, it. Yeah. Somebody has to call them out. You have to shame people for behaving that's the, poorly. That's the only... And, and people have told me, like, just ignore them. And I'm like, no, no, no. When I ignored them, they kept doing it. Now that I, like, make a big deal out of it, they don't do it as much anymore. That's yeah. Like, shame's a popular you know? tool. It, it keeps me, me from... It is. You know, I was a fat kid. You got... You know, I had a cousin that would shame me. You know what I mean? Like, he, like, he would pat me on the back. He would pat me on the stomach and go, oh, gaining some weight. Too much fucking Tim. You know what I mean? These cousins. <laughs> I have. And I remember that moment, but I was also like, well, he's got a point. I got a little thing I got to get working on. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. A, you know you don't want you don't want your whole life to be like being shamed by your parents or whatever but like you get a little bit of razzing kind of mm-hmm. keeps everyone in the right direction yeah it keeps people in line problem with now is that people are getting shamed for like you know Liam Neeson getting shamed because he wanted to kill a black guy 30 years ago it's like can the guy just be honest can we, can we have an honest conversation here without just going straight to like cancel culture well that's a little the, bit different. even the yeah. way you said it just now like miss was is a misconception of like what he actually meant a guy had a fleeting thought did he act on a thought no, no he, he was, knew the thought was wrong yes but like well in his he case had he a, circled around looking for a black guy to kill like he yeah it was like that's pretty where fucked he was up, but, but he was but he learned from it and right. he didn't act on it i have feelings every day someone walks by I go ah, i walk you know someone's walking their dog ah, i could just grab their ass right now every guy you'd be an, you'd be an idiot to not be like look we live next to a high school again this is but like but you know you're not allowed to but you're allowed and to. And you don't. No, exactly. But you. But like, hiccups, even like. saying the thought now is like, mm-hmm. like now it's like if you get SNL and you're going to be a cast member, you delete your Twitter. And people go, yeah. well, they deleted 20,000 tweets. It's, we're not even get angry at what they said. It's what they could have said. Right. The, yeah. the lady who just joined uh, Bernie Sanders campaign. Oh, she scrubbed her account. What must have she? It's like, what the fuck? We yeah. all, we can have these reptilian, these bizarre thoughts. Well, it's probably more like because everybody knows that they've all had dirty thoughts and yeah, it's like a sick thing that like they yeah. want to know what other people's dirty thoughts if are I, too if, if someone called me tomorrow and go dave you got your own sitcom i am bolting down my world i am just oh, gonna yeah. hurricane proof these windows oh yeah, yeah everything's deleted the podcast goes straight private until i figure shit out it's got to go straight yeah, private. join the patreon sure. everybody patreon.com slash the sap everything has to be handled that way because i don't need someone telling me i misset a word because i've spoken yeah you would have to hours right hire like a pr company yes. to like, like go okay, in and scrub all, all your stuff and get rid of everything problematic but yeah anyway, i digress the point was you shouldn't be living in your own home feeling a little bit weird when you open up a photo like you're right. a seasoned like strong woman right so it's not gonna affect it's not gonna hit right. you and that way. Like, like it's happening to you it's happening to everybody right yeah like it's, it's happening, happening to, to all of us good i've i've literally blocked hundreds yeah. of dicks on Snapchat. I don't even use Snapchat right. anymore, but for a while I was using a lot and just got fucking yeah. old. It just got old of getting bombarded with dicks every yeah. day. <laughs> oh, my defensive player of the year. My, <laughs> my block list on all social media is so long. Like I've had people like, from Instagram been like, Hey, you blocked me a while back. Like they've messaged me from another account or something. And I've been like, you know what? My block list is so long. I don't even know where the fuck you are on it. Like thousands, <laughs> thousands of people. And it's like, what did you do to like, deserve to get blocked? And, and people like, will be like, do you learned. remember me? I'm like, no, I don't remember you. I block like 20 people a day. Like, you know what needs to happen? You need you need a little uh, gif of a uh, handmaid's tale saying, blessed be, when you block. <laughs> blessed be, and then you just, like, you should be able to customize. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm just full of these great thoughts here. But like, you just forget they exist. It's gone. It's out of your life. And ignorance is bliss. Yeah. It's bliss. Like there's certain, even comics I, I unfollow. I'm not going to unfriend them because it's right. like a thing on Facebook. It's like, all right, I'm not trying to make this isn't for you to be like, why the fuck did Dave? It's just for me to be like, I need to take I a break from you. This. There's just too much something going on that I don't like. Yeah. And I think that's okay. We don't have to be combative with people we don't agree on. Like, it'd, it'd be nice if you sat next to um, a guy who was like a Trump guy and you weren't. And then by the end of the flight, you went on a date and you figured things out and he was like, oh yeah, maybe you had some good points. That would be nice. But a lot of times it's, it's a battle and we're shooting at each other from mm-hmm. far away way and it's like you're not changing it's like you're not connecting with people in a way where you're changing it's just, the opinions. internet is just not designed like for healthy normal behaviors yeah, like it I rewards mean, abnormal behaviors yeah, it, it rewards anger it rewards yeah. like bragging or like you know it reward and negative attention is still attention mm-hmm. so and people like thrive on it and as bad as that all the vitriol and the comment section as bad as that all is 
I think we are the nicest. Like, like I think humans do have a ton of compassion. You just have to like put that filter up where you see the world through. Like, like you just we would never we would never be communicating with these haters. They just right. you walk right by them. You see some crazy guy yelling on the street. You just look the other way. Yeah. Somet- somehow online we feel the need to be like, oh, I'm gonna change. And it's like it just doesn't matter. Like I had to block that guy, and you know. But I wanted to ask you this, and feel free. We can not not talk about this at all. But where you were doing. Um, uh, you were sell. You were uh, selling photos. Yeah, is yeah. that something you want to talk? Can we talk about that? Yeah, sure. Is that something you're still doing? Yeah. What's okay? So, 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 tell us about the business model here. You just so I don't do it the same way. I don't have like a premium Snapchat or a, um like or a, a private or Instagram a Patreon or OnlyFans. I it kind of like. We should give her a Patreon tier of ours. <laughs> and you pay extra, you get to see my titties. <laughs> um, but no, it just kind of... I would get guys ask all the time, like, oh, you're so hot. Like, can I like see nudes or whatever? And a girlfriend of mine was like, you should just send your PayPal link and see what happens. And I was like, all right, I'll, I'll try that. And then and guys would pay. So I was like, how and, much? And I have no problem like showing my boobs or anything. Like probably the half of the city of Austin has seen my tits like <laughs> on a, standing on a bar somewhere. Like this is ultimate deal. Uh, free market economy right here. This is <laughs> but, so all of our audio listeners are like, oh, I gotta go <laughs> check out the YouTube link. Well, actually, we'll mention <laughs> your Instagram yeah. now. We'll mention it again, but it's at the underscore Meredith. Yes. E-E-I Meredith. M-E-R-E-D-I-T-H. Yes, okay, correct. Anyway, back um, to it. They all pause. So We're back. <laughs> I got, you know, I, it would happen here and there. And then the one like kind of tipping point, I just wanted to like try it out to see what would happen. I posted a picture of some stupid ass thing that I wanted that I could have bought for myself, but it was just like dumb. It was like, it was a Yeti cup that looks like a Whataburger cup, which Whataburger, if you're not familiar, is the fast food chain, chain mm-hmm. in Texas. And it's very popular. But what so, a white trash. It's so good. No, <laughs> like, it's so yeah. good. I, I, I wanted it so bad. I was like, this is so awesome. And it was like, but it was so dumb that I like wasn't going to buy it for myself. Yeah. So I posted a picture on um, my Snapchat. This was before Snapchat like lost half of its users. Because um, the, cause of the cause Kardashians. Instagram, yeah. yeah. But so I just posted, whoever buys me this gets nudes. Ah. And I closed my app and then I reopened it about half an hour later and I had like 68 messages. There's a forklift at your door. (laughs) So so what I did is I allowed one person to actually buy it for me and then the rest of them, I was like, it's already been bought, but if you PayPal me for the same dollar amount, I'll send you a couple pictures. And um, this was like a $50 like cup. I made like three thousand dollars in twenty four hours. Holy shit! Yeah, so I was like, business. I well, and so I was like. (laughs) Oh, I can fucking do this. So now I, I've kind of like figured out the best way to do it. And I send like a privacy notice. I even have like a form cease and desist if somebody tries to threaten a leak. Um, and I have wow. like a lawyer and stuff. So um, I've kind of like figured out a whole business model. And so do like, you pay the lawyer with nude photos? <laughs> no, he's pretty much, he's like a friend of mine. So he kind of, anything that I need, he just kind of does it for free. Um because I haven't needed him to re- really do anything. But it's great yet. to have that. Yeah, that yeah brass just to like, you. just in case. Um, Who knew? This is a. Uh... But yeah, and so, and it's not, I mean, I don't, it's not like that all the time. But so basically, like once a week, I'll post something on my story on Instagram and Snapchat, like, I'm running a sale, I've got new pictures and a new video, like DM for more info, and then I just send him my pricing and how to pay me. And how far are we going here? Like, what's the, like, how far are you willing to go? I do, um, it will take all kinds of nudes, and I do like masturbation videos. Um, and what does a masturbation video go for? I'm asking for the audience here. I'm trying to. I'm your hype um, man. I'm selling you. <laughs> Get it while it's on the news. I'm selling newspapers. They're going extra, extra, fifty dollars. Usually fifty bucks. Okay, but 50 then I bucks. run sales like pretty often, like knock off. Like, like have you spent too much on Amazon that month? You're like, oh boy, I bought a little <laughs> bit, too many Whataburger. Uh, no, it's here. I and I just kind of like I have that pricing all the time, but then like I'll run a little sale and be like, like I did a St. Patrick's Day sale. So oh, yeah, are you worried at all? And I, and none of these questions are me trying to like place this mm-hmm. on you, like you know what I mean. But like, are you worried at all about family or? Or, or like, say, if you change career paths mm-hmm. to being out there, is that like a thought, or are you just like, fuck I'm, it? I'm really not worried about it. Um, if I honestly, I think my mom like knows, but she acts like she doesn't know, <laughs> and she kind of is like cool as long as I'm like happy and safe and making a good living. Um, 
so it's not really that all my friends know. And then as far as career, I mean, like I'm building kind of a business to make myself my career. Um, so I really don't think, you know, as I get more into comedy and everything, I don't think anybody's going to be too mad about it. I mean, porn stars are doing comedy. So, yeah. you know yeah. what I mean? Like, that's not weird. Anymore. Absolutely. Yeah. It's the same way that like the stigma about Botox has gone down and the right. stigma about it's, tattoos has gone down. Like yeah. the stigma about nudity has gone down because everybody has taken a right. nude photo. I guess the worry, the worry is like you're an adult, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? But like there's plenty of teens that get on Instagram where they're shooting, mm-hmm. they feel the pressure to shoot off nudes. It's bizarre. I saw my first boob. Uh, we were all at the dock. I was like, I don't know, 16 or 15 or whatever. And some girl, I won't say her name. We'll call her Liz, not her name. She jumps off the dock and walks back up the, you know, the ladder mm-hmm. and her tit, you know, had fallen. <laughs> Come out of her <laughs> but she didn't know. <laughs> right. She walked down the whole dock and every guy looked at each other yeah. like, they will never forget this. It was so like PTSD in a good way mm-hmm. into our brain. Like we dumped so much testosterone and adrenaline in that moment that that whole scenario is print. I know everything. Right. That happened, and it was like that. And now there, you can just like send a photo to whoever. I you they're know, basically like swapping child porn because they're all like fifteen, sixteen I know. doing it. I have. Um, I'm pretty. Since I have my profiles on private, I can kind of monitor who is any anybody who's messaging me asking. Um, I you know I check out their profile and make sure they're adult. Um, and I always say eighteen and up only. But when girls ask me sometimes, um, like about doing that or getting started. I, I, this is the biggest piece of advice and I don't give away all my trade secrets because I'm like, you can pay me a consulting fee. Like, <laughs> don't ask me all my secrets. <laughs> um, I'm 34 years old and I already have my career path set. If you're 22 and just looking to pay off some student loans, think about what you're going to do for your career because if you plan on doing, you know, plan on becoming a doctor or a lawyer or any... I think or teacher, a teacher. Or a teacher's yeah. like the only one where like you'll get fired if they find right. which, which which I think is fucked up. It's just it's very like there's you need to think about mm-hmm. it. Whereas and like you know, you've done like the planning about like having right. cease and desist and whatever, but there's literally right. like you've got to expect that every picture you ever take is going to be screenshot and posted right. on Reddit, and you just got have to be okay yeah. with that because so, there's no like real privacy, you know, like right. which would probably help your marketing, you know what right. I mean? Like even like you know because when things are passed around, people ah oh, I'll say more and, and like yeah that the you know having a lawyer and all that also when it comes to the financial aspect, I have a CPA. I made a lot of money last year, so I don't want to get audited by the IRS. Yeah. So I'm I'm doing it all the correct way, whereas I think that they are those are a lot of things that somebody who's young is not really thinking about. Like, yeah, you can make a lot of money, but like making a lot of money really quickly comes with some consequence. So have you thought about penetrative like uh sex? Yes. Uh, with that? But I'm not I'm not comfortable making a video with somebody that's not like my boyfriend. And I don't have any of those on the horizon right now. So, but um, I will say, when it comes to dating, guys have been really. I've only run into maybe once or twice a guy's been like, "Oh, I wouldn't really date somebody that did that." And then I'm like, "Well, if that's gonna bother you, you're gonna have a bad time going out uh, with me." It is a litmus all. test for sure. I am. There's a whole lot more to my personality that you probably yeah, can't wait deal to see with. her act. Like, yeah. Um, <laughs> so. It's interesting what you said. So you're private because Tasha, I've mentioned, I've mentioned. Or we've talked about like Tasha's Instagram and like you give away your social media for free. Why would they? They don't need to follow you to see your photos. Yeah. Have you considered going private? No, but maybe today I've learned something. And I I'll be go honest. Private. I followed people in the past just because I'm like I can't see right. if I want to follow you or not. But have but like making me follow, it's like I'm in. I so I know with accounts more like mine, it's very beneficial. I don't know if the benefit is the same. Um, because you're a model. I, I have f- other friends who are fitness models and things like that, that it doesn't help them. But your, yeah. your Instagram is you as the profile photo. Yeah. So people see you and they go, Oh, I want to see more. I guess I got to follow her. Yeah. So like where's Tasha? Like you have the, you have the profile. Photo. I'm sure it's like 50, 50. Some yeah, people I mean, are going to see it and be like, Oh, I want to see. And I can always unfollow if I feel right. like it. And some people are going to be like, never mind, Not worth it. So the thing what's is, not worth it. What's well, not worth it. Well, I've totally button. been a person who's like tried to click on somebody's profile and saw that it was private and was like, never mind. But it's like, it, it, it basically, it, it takes away all the lurkers and goes, so all right, well, the you, issue, in- the other issue is if you're on private, you do not show up on the explore page. Oh. So for me, 
Really? It's fine because I have other large Instagram accounts reposting my jokes and stuff. So, you know, like my, I have a friend who has 3 million followers and he posted one of my jokes last night and I got hundreds of new followers overnight. Whereas if you're not the kind of account where people are reposting you a so lot, they just like, then people aren't going to see it. Sorry, yeah. sorry to interrupt. They just screen grab and then uh-huh. say like my grandfather. <laughs> How do I do it? Please. Yeah, I just screenshotted my post and posted it on his page and tagged me. Whereas like the fuck Jerry's of the world weren't doing that. They weren't so, tagging people. Yeah, and that's a really, um, this is something we've been Fat talking. Fat they weren't. Yeah, it's something we've been talking about a lot. Two of my friends that run really big meme accounts, White People Humor and Insta Single. They are very, very careful about if they take a tweet, find something on Twitter, they'll post it on their page and absolutely credit where they who tweeted it, leave their name on it because they're not, you know, assholes. We just yeah. started posting more memes uh, just to switch it up on our the yeah. Saps Instagrams, Tasha. So we'll have to. We'll have to. Yeah, yeah I always try and post tag the person where I got it from. Yeah. Normally, it's not even original there. It's right. like it's been reposted hundreds of but, times. But yeah, and and so this is something that I think that there are some content creators that don't understand how viral internet works. Um, because if I if you tweeted something really funny, I screenshot it's it. It's not going to happen. But go well, ahead. if you did, <laughs> <laughs> and then I posted it on my, I screenshot it with your Twitter handle still on the photo, posted it on my Instagram. And then I said, oh, this is really funny. This is from Dave Neal's Twitter. Um, you're going to get exposure. You're going to get followers. Yeah, people are going to click. Right. If you use the at, people are right. going to click exactly. your handle Absolutely. and go to your page and, to your and hit oh, follow. Oh, that's fair. Yeah, that's and fair. And so there are a couple of people in kind of the comedy world that don't understand this, that think that every time I post one of your jokes, I'm getting, I'm making money off of it. And I'm not, I'm making money when a company pays to post an ad on my profile. And the reason I have enough followers for that is because somebody else took my joke and posted it on their page and tagged me. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like like being part of a community where people are like lifting each other up. Giving exposure. I think the majority of people are okay with the way it's being done now. It was the idea that like I I did I've done I've worked events before where like where where Fat Jewish was like the celebrity guest and we he was getting paid like fifty grand to show up. Oh yeah, and he was just stealing from you know like and he had a book signing that had to be canceled because people were like, man, fuck this guy. Yeah, yeah. We're out here doing it the old school way. It doesn't mean your way is wrong. It just means you got to credit. So you're, of course. Yeah, we uh, my a friend of mine posted a a girl's tweet and had her name on it and everything and she messaged him and she was like um thanks for posting my tweet can you and he couldn't find her instagram handle because it's completely different from her twitter handle so it's like what is he gonna do and he said that like where he found it on twitter Mm -hmm. and she was like um Venmo me for however much you made off of that post. That's not how Instagram fucking works. Yeah, are you an like, idiot? Not anyone to individual Let me Venmo post. you zero dollars right, right yes. now. Cool. <laughs> Send you zero dollars. One penny. <laughs> like, uh, like, don't you want the followers? And also, a company pays me X amount of dollars for me to post them on my page or somebody will pay me to shout them out. So, really, I'm giving away a free service. I'm yeah. giving you a free service. Yeah. And Especially I think like, don't get that. If someone messages you and is like, hey, and I've totally done this, like somebody will be like, like an art account or something or like an inspo account will be like, oh, I don't know who this, like who the person is and I follow that person. It's like, oh, that photographer is so-and-so and that model is so-and-so because right. I know these people. Like, it's there. I think there's nothing wrong with as a content sure. creator posting and being like, I don't know where this came from, but I think it's awesome and right. I love it. If anybody knows who this is, let me know. I do that. Or all the if time. they message you and say, Oh, this is my work. Do you mind to right. tag me? Anybody yeah. is going to be like, Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. No if you're if you're nice, if you're like, Hey, and I've done this before because I see some of my tweets go around with my name chopped off or whatever, and I've been like, Hey, this was one of mine. Would you mind crediting me? Here's the original. No problem. Nine times out of ten, they will credit you. You Daddy know who never, you know who Everybody. never credited me despite Maxim. multiple emails. <laughs> Maxim. I was going to tell really? you. Maxim. Yeah. Big butt. That's right in the middle. Posted my ass, and I like commented, and I DM'd, and they never fucking credited. That's bullshit. They ne- yeah. That's, that's bullshit. Right? They have a massive following. Yeah. That's a yeah. nice ass picture that was a of nice my ass. ass. 
There was a good booty. There was a good booty <laughs> over there. And they like, and they, I think they had credited the photographer too, which made right. me even more pissed off because the photographer had credited me. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. It's not like it would have been that much work for them to tag the model. World Stars done that to me. World Stars posted my shit and not credited me, and I've asked a million times and they did it, and I was like, all right, well, whatever, fuck you. But, um, but if Still somebody, sour about if it. somebody <laughs> comes into my DMs, if I've posted something that I don't know who wrote it, I don't know where it came from but I just found it somewhere on the internet and someone comes in my DMS aggressive and mad and like, like you fucking stole my shit. I have never stolen a joke from anyone ever. Yeah, Give it a little like, benefit of the doubt. Like yeah, yeah. go, if you approach me like that, I'm going to block you and I'm going to leave it up there. and I'm not going to credit you. Like, don't, yeah, cool like your bite, yeah, like don't bite the hand that feeds you. I'm happy to credit <laughs> somebody and give them tons of followers, you know? Yeah. You should trade nude photos for credit. <laughs> uh, we got to get out of here. I wanted to mention, so I don't have the exact date, but are you going to do the next Mimosa show? Yeah. Sweet. I think it's going to be the the Sunday before Easter. Yeah. Which Easter is the 21st of April. So I just have to make sure. I, I mean, the 15th. Let me look real Something quick. Like when the four, promoting it's the 14th. Date. It's the 14th? Yeah. All right. So I think that's going to be the day, but I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. But yeah. we'd love to have you on the show. Absolutely. We've done it two months in a row, and, w- and we... Uh, the the we post and again it would be with your permission we we you know everyone uh, sees how their set goes but we posted um to our Patreon the live show totally yeah and uh, no I because like each the first two uh, so like each of the first two stand-up shows we did one comic didn't want to be and i guess if people are listening they could deduce who it was if you're one of our patreon members but and i i always say like no pressure if you don't want your material out there but they both had strong sets but like one comic of the la- of the last episode was like i don't like to like put my things out there it's a pri- it's it's into it's for like you know, yeah. 11, eleven people. people. Yeah, <laughs> our like, eleven I'm Patreons. Yeah. But it's a great way. Our eleven Patreons. We love you so much. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being <laughs> the first people to show up and support. We just started the Patreon yeah. last we had, month, and we're awesome. like super grateful. Two Patreons. Vic showed up the first uh, week, and then uh, first month, and then Kyle showed up, brought a friend, drove all the way down from Lancaster, That's which is like awesome. an hour plus away. We had uh, ev- we had to bring an extra. We had to be- bring in seats from the green room. We had to literally <laughs> comics had to stand because we had so many oh, audience shit. members. Well, that's like awesome. I said, we had eight. Eight liters of champagne and then halfway through the show after my set i was already kind of like tipsy because i was like <laughs> drinking whatever like i don't know if i was drinking people you know like wounded soldiers but i was definitely you know what i mean i was i was i was happy because the green dye we used the blue uh carousel which is the turns the oj green mm-hmm. is actually liquor too so the liquor the dye is liquor plus the liquor i was pretty sauced and then there's a 7-eleven around the corner so i had to go grab these miller lights so we're drinking the extras <laughs> but i was i was amazed and we did donations only and i can't tell you every comic got paid that's awesome and it's important for me to like say that gratitude out loud because every comic not only got paid but was so grateful to me for that for them performing and getting paid the yeah. first month i think every comic got paid 10 bucks because i was like after we you know per- this month every comic got paid i think 20 or 25 getting, that's fucking nuts paid that's more than hollywood improv pays yeah we paid the comics more than the comedy store pays their headliners to do a spot you know what i mean right and we did it on at noon on a sunday and because just because people who support the podcast showed up and and our friends showed up and wanted to be generous with I, I literally feel f- felt like when this when I because I posted like I was like ah oh, you know you'll listen if you're part of the Patreon you'll listen go to patreon.com slash the sap you can hear the whole episode because this comes out Monday so th- that up uh, the um, that second month stand-up will be up uh, the, this coming Friday but uh, at, at last month was completely different comedians so you literally have an hour and a half to two hours of really funny comedians like they're they're like Ken Gar, he just got back like from headlining Chicago. He performs in fucking uh, uh, Djibouti for the troops or wherever. Like awesome. he's all over the place. <laughs> we got like Jay Hollingsworth with multiple albums. All these comics are doing their album tapings yeah. and they're doing our thing. And I literally felt like Mark Zuckerberg, which is a weird. <laughs> I felt like that moment he knew he had like his shit was Something going special. Like, Two going billion on. people. Like because I was like. And again, I'm taking like the same as everybody, you know, whatever. Like we're like, I, if I performed, I take the comic cut. Everyone takes a cut. 
but uh, but then I look at my Venmo and I'm like, oh, dude paid fifty bucks for this. Dude paid twenty, and That's it's like, amazing. wow, they drank a bunch of mimosas. They got to see live stand up, and some people pro- might not have had the funds and they bounced. But right. most people like donated, and I did. All I had to do was ask once. I posted. I put like on the wall. I stuck a sticker with like my Venmo. I was like, thank you so much, and they just all were so nice. And it's like in L. A. You can't get people to show up. No, you can't, you can't get people to open their wallets. Like you can't do any of that. And yet, two months in a row. Full audiences, great taping, all that stuff. Well, um, I mean, people in LA do love brunch. They, they love do brunch. like mimosa. and mimosa. Like that's a yeah. Three, like so the, <laughs> so the first month I called it a brunch stand-up show, and the people were like, "Dude, there's no brunch, no brunch." I was like, <laughs> "Yeah, it's mom-. I was like, "Okay." So this month I was like, "Mimosa." mimosa show. I really think though that we should get one of like the like street vendors to come yeah. out and just be. Have like a food truck. outside. Yeah. yeah, you know what I would love is the, one of those barbecue guys to do like bar like barbecue tacos. Yeah, oh, cool. like that'd a little awesome. even like the guys outside Dodger Stadium that do the little like bacon wrap <laughs> hot dogs or whatever. Like you know they have just like the tiny carts or like, like the tiny fruit people. The <laughs> it's not like a, tacos. we need like a full deal. Tiny but we fruit could, people. <laughs> <laughs> the tiny fruit small cart. people yeah. with small. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. only very small people. It's actually children. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the children i just said they were tiny fruit people but i feel like we should totally just ask around and be like hey listen there's gonna be some hungry folks with like money in their pocket you know what's the best part of the show is i said fuck you facebook events fuck you mm-hmm. evite fuck all that it was from me- private messages promoting it on the podcast and that was it Word of mouth, people would just... listen to the podcast and they would do the rewind button to get all the info i don't give the address out you got to ask me for it because you have to rsvp right we had one guy that was like oh cool i'll swing by no you won't nope nope oh you know he goes i'll roll on by <laughs> yeah no you won't you don't roll on by a stand-up no. show you get there at 11 15 you drink a couple mimosas you laugh for an hour and a half and then it's over like you don't there's no coming in and coming out although raquel past guest uh, playmate of the year, Raquel Pomplin. Came, she was late because she went to the wrong location. There was two locations. She, it was her fault, but she went to the wrong location. <laughs> we love her. She came late. She's, I'm just so happy she showed up. I am too. It she, was nice to see she her. She was going to bail. And I was like, no, 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 no. Tasha's waiting for you. She's got a seat for you. You got to come. It was like a very, it's nice to see past. And again, all the comedians are past podcast guests, which I think is like, that's really great. It's the only tie in. It's like, we're not doing a podcast show. Tasha's there when, when it comes time to passing out the sex toys we give out, mm. Tasha throws the dildos on stage. <laughs> if she wants that's to, that's con- my job. The Vanna white of dildos. <laughs> I should get you to walk on stage with it. Would that be better for you? <laughs> Try I have to, a cute outfit on. Maybe we'll get her to like ring girl it on stage. <laughs> 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 with dildos. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so 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 I'll give you the date, and then, and yeah. then we'll, we'll double confirm that that'll happen. So that'll be mid April, and uh, fuck yeah, that'll be awesome. So uh, what 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 can you promote here? Just your Instagram or tell um, us. Yeah, right now, uh, just my Instagram at the underscore Meredith M E R E D I T H. Um, I'm the Meredith, all one word, on Twitter, and um, that's really all I have to pr- promote right this minute. Aside from um, your brunch show, amazing. M- yeah. Mimosa, show. Mimosa, so. Mimosa show. Mimosa show. Mimosa show. Maybe I'll, I'll talk to the street <laughs> Mimosa show. And let me know. I want to do, now that I did this special St. Patrick's Day mimosa, the green mimosas, mm. I want to start doing like a different Bellini every month. I want to do something different. Do you different. like some Easter pastel mimosas? Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 Or, or maybe, yeah, we'll do like pass out Easter eggs or something. We'll yeah, make it yeah, real, yeah. real Christian Easter eggs and dildos. <laughs> yeah. And me talking about sucking dick. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus rose after the third day. So will your boner. Um, I don't know. That was weird. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, for folks, so so aside from the paid Patreon, I've started just putting my blogs on there as well. So I do like episode recaps when I can. So I'll probably do this this week when I'm, when we're out of town, when I'm on my flight or something. Just like, just write out like a nice heartfelt, like behind the scenes, like what's going on. That, I'm trying to do the blog part public just to get people to the yeah. Patreon. But I can't tell you, I mean, I'm sure you understand the feeling. But like I woke up the other night, I like in the middle of the night and I had a f- email notification that we had a new patreon person mm-hmm. and it was someone who had written in before i don't want to say i'll call her lola i think her fake name's lola we've called her before um she's trying to get us to go to a swingers club in ohio which oh. is awesome she's like okay <laughs> she's like yeah, since we show up it's her address uh we love you lola uh but it's um it's i would literally was like are you fucking kidding me i can't wait to show i can't i always because they go to my email i can't wait to show tasha when we have a new person right. it's just so there's only 11 of them but like 
I didn't think anyone would do this. Right. You know what no, I mean? No, it's exciting. And so we're giving all this extra content, the extra stand-up show. Uh, it doing two two a month. I'm doing just solo stuff. Or Tasha and I are going to do like on our flight. We're going to just you know like just mm-hmm. record just different, but like shit that I can't share on this. Like I just signed, I signed to a new agency today. So I'm going to like talk all this shit about my old agent, <laughs> like all that shit I can't yeah. do. I'm like, I can talk shit about my old agent. I can do all that. And who, who the fuck cares? Right. I talk, they're like, going to pay $5 so they can listen to what you good. said. About them. It, it'll be the most money they ever made me. <laughs> <laughs> the only five bucks I ever made. I'll give them 10%. <laughs> but like, but it's like, I have these thoughts of like, Oh, I can talk about that on there. I can talk about that stupid Pepsi audition, you know, where I butchered, the lyrics to the Jimmy Buffett song. I can do all of this stuff. It's just a fun place. I, so you haven't done Patreon? I haven't done Patreon yet. And I, I've been playing around with the idea. I'm working on... Um, I just finished rebuilding my website and I'm still kind of adding some things to it. So probably in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to fully relaunch it. And then at that point, I think that I may go the Patreon route. It's cool. So they we'll do take see. a little bit of a percentage, whatever yeah. their press is. If you, but I mean, they, but they, they, they have all these like, like articles to show you how to engage. Right. And, and, and the, and the one thing, and of course, again, I know Tasha's going to say, like, I told you that a million times, but they really tell you like, you are worth it. Right. You're right. worth it. Eight dollars a month, five dollars. We have different levels. Like we, like we have the fifty dollars soap level. You don't have to do it, but if you want it, we got a chest full of homemade soap. Get that level for Mother's Day month, and then we'll ship it to you, and then knock back down to the right. other content. Like there's, it's very flexible. It's a fun app, and it's like you can just share. Sh- you can just share shit you might not be willing to share with the world mm-hmm. because it's just like a private thing where we're sending postcards to all of our first time like Patreon buyers and then there's a level where we give a monthly postcard. It's like, it's cool for us because we get to do arts and craft along with the other things we get to do and it literally is days of my other side job I don't have to do now. You know what I right, mean? Right, yeah. So it's not like yeah. pity. It's just like, well, instead of doing that, I get to talk to my mo- our most loyal people. Yeah. It's giving you the ability to make more content, the kind of content yeah. that people already love. Plus, we're going to release all of Meredith's nude photos. <laughs> That's first. like the really, really expensive tier. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, $150 a month. Uh, Tasha Courtney on Instagram. Anything you want to promote, Tasha? Nah. We're going to a wedding this weekend, so we'll have to do a wedding recap when we get back. We're doing a Kentucky wedding. Oh. Whoop, whoop. And I'm going to try my best not to vomit at this open bar because every the last like three open bars I've been to, I either vomited or felt like I was going to... Don't embarrass yeah, The me. last wedding we went to, Jade's wedding, I vomited. You did? Yeah, when we got back to the hotel. I don't remember that. You don't remember I vomited back the hotel and then we, and then you told everyone the next morning at the oh, pool. Oh, I probably did. Oh yeah, I did. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I'm not responsible enough for an open. It bar. wasn't. I wasn't wasted. I was just like, oh, I'll do your champagne. Oh, I'll do your. Sh-. And I was just it just mixing, mixing too many uh, things. Yeah, I was yeah. like a, being a baller because I in where it's normally like one IPA for you, sir. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so it's at the underscore Meredith. Yes. At Tash Courtney, I'm at D Niels, and then uh, we're gonna well, let's take a photo when we're done here, and we'll post it on Sounds our good. Instagram at the dot sap so go to at the sap and then um oh also so these episodes for those hey look if you love our audio i i get it i totally understand but also we're posting the vi- all, all these videos also on on youtube so just search the sap on youtube or it's under my my it's a it's a playlist called the sap under dave neal but anyway it's it, it'll be in the description of this uh, episode you're listening to right now so if you want to watch us if you're at work or whatever the thing is with youtube is that we don't get many we don't get many views on YouTube, mm-hmm. but like the la- but like we get all of our downloads on audio only, which is fine. But right. I posted last episode on YouTube, it had like sixty nine views, but that <laughs> nice, e- but that equaled <laughs> right, that equaled a thousand minutes listened. Do you know what I mean? Oh, because yeah. like the, the those sixty nine people were like. They put it on probably at work. Like, you know, I listen to them when I'm driving, when I'm working out, when mm-hmm. I'm, when I'm like uh, washing the dishes. Like, that's how I listen to podcasts. Doing laundry? Are you kidding me? A fucking podcast. I'm just, you know what I mean? But some people, if they're at their desk jobs or whatever and you want to like check in on us, that's where you can go find us. But um, anyway, it really trailed off here. So that's it. I uh, can't wait to- <laughs> Trying to wrap it up for 45 minutes. <laughs> yeah. We're all just sitting yeah. here waiting. We got to pack. Are you ready to pack? Oh, I'm I so excited. Packing. You know what? Okay, you know what? We'll, we'll leave. But I got you. I got you the cauliflower pizza crust to make you pizza. But this is what I did. First time in years, I got the Trader Joe's 
real wheat dough pepperoni pizzas. <laughs> this is my single life when I would just get a pizza and just watch TV alone in my undies with like my balls hanging through oh, the little Oh, babe, I'm so happy you're going to have a nice <laughs> wheat pizza night tonight. Wheat pizza. Not even whole wheat, just blanched wheat. Anyway, thanks so much for being on the show. <laughs> thanks for having me. Uh, we'll see if this episode beats your other episode. But uh, I yeah, feel we'll like see. I feel well. like you're our number one. I told her before we started, I was like, we need to have a Sappies Award where we give out awards. Yeah. To, because for you're, like top episode of the year yeah. or something. And I know none of our dildos we've gotten from Adam and Eve will be enough. I know you've already been covered I've got by a them. whole <laughs> have you gotten some of our soap yet yeah yes you gave me I, some I did soap give you soap last year you, for christmas do, do, uh, do, you, do you need have you used yeah, it yeah i yes i used it do, did you like it yeah i did so begging for I did. compliments <laughs> we'll give you, we'll give you yeah. some more soap tell me you soap. love me our number one uh podcast guest Marilyn jacqueline you get soap <laughs> you get a soap you get it look under your chair everybody's soap all right that's it everybody have a good one bye yeah, yes. bye No, you did. You gave me soap like a year ago. (laughs) Yeah.